Welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with the spirit of the truth. Yes, this book, published in 1961, a hundred years after the gospel according to Spiritism, and some of its messages were released. Of course, the gospel according to Spiritism was published in 1864. But there are messages in this book that were published in the Spiritist magazine, and Kardec kept it to compile the Spiritist, the Gospel According to Spiritism. Today, Euripides Barsanufo, the very spirit Euripides Barsanufo, comes to us to teach an unprecedented message. This was published in 1961. Imagine, it seems so current. It's for the time today, in the midst of our new era. Euripides Barsanufo, for those who don't know, he was born on May 1st, 1880, and he died November 1st, 1918. He died of the Spanish flu. He was helping so many people in his pharmacy, in the center, at school, during the pandemic more than 100 years ago in Brazil. He was a Brazilian educator, a pharmacist, politician, and a very, very complete medium. Says Chico Xavier that Euripides Barçanuf was the most complete medium in spiritism. He's also known as the founder and the headmaster of the school college, Allan Kardec, Allan Kardec, the first spiritist school in the world. And if you want to visit it, it's still there standing. And by brilliant people, his great, great and um, niece, Alzira Bessa. And this is in City, Sacramento, Minas Gerais, Brazil. Euripides Barsanufo. He's a wonderful spirit that today is helping so many of us. So many of us. And today he has a special message for us. Yes. You and I know that the times are changing, right? We know the times are changing. And yet we don't sometimes decide to change but it seems like we won't escape from the change so here we have the message that inspired Euripides Barsanufo to write this one it's in chapter 18 item 9 of the gospel according to spiritism the gospel according to spiritism welcome welcome dear friends keep joining us Keep joining us. And chapter 18, I just lost the page, sorry. The message is in chapter, many are called, but few are chosen. Think about this, right? Think about this. Jesus said that he counts on us. You're being called and I've been called and what are we doing with it? We're always thinking like, oh, Vanessa, but come on. I'm not Chico Xavi. I'm not this person. But you're a child of God like everybody else. You account in the works of the good. He's, he's inspired by Kardec's works that begin like this. All those who proclaim Jesus' mission say, Lord, Lord. But what use is it to call him master of Lord if they do not follow Jesus' precepts? And at the end of this, item 9, chapter 18 of the Gospel According to Spiritism, Kardec says, Jesus' words are eternal, but they are the truth. Because they are the truth. They are not only a certainty of life in heaven, but a pledge of peace, tranquility, stability in matters regarding life on earth. 
Wow. So the question is, we're being called, what are we doing with it? And this is the message by Euripides Barcelona for today. Are you ready? Are you ready, friends? Are you ready for this? It begins like that. In the midst of a new era, there are individuals that are left on earth as they are only trace of life that they enjoyed in the flesh, the mausoleum forgotten in a corner of solitary cemetery. No useful memories, no reminiscence in fraternal basis, no acts that remind them of an attitude in faith, no edifying example in the curriculum of existence, no idea that would overcome the barrier of mediocrity, no gesture of love that earned them the due of gratitude in their name, the land forcibly retained only the corpse, fraction of exhausted matter that dressed their spirit that without intention to fertilize the wild herbs. They used the loans of, from the magnanimous father exclusively for themselves, forgetting to extend them to the companions of evolution and ignoring that true joy does not live isolated in one soul, since it only thrives with reciprocity of vibrations between various groups of friendly beings, spiritists. Many of us already live like this. However, now the times are different and the responsibilities are greater. Spiritism, tearing our narrow and dull minds wide horizons of a superior ideal impels us forward towards the peaks of perfectibility. Active and needy humanity, building its future triumphs calls us to work. The spirit is a living monument of God, the loving creator. Let us honor our divine origin creating good as rains of blessings along our own footprints. Brothers and sisters, be victorious in the face of the enslaving routine. Each day, the light of a new life is reborn with, and with death, only illusions die. The spirit must be known for its works. It's necessary to live, and to serve. It's necessary to leave, my dear brothers and sisters, and to be more than dust. Wow, what an educator. He, he's bringing a case, he's making a case here for us. He's saying, we're gonna pass by in life and then discriminate. Because if we are living under the illusions that we're doing great, we need to open our eyes and double check with our conscience. He's, this last sentence is unbelievable. He says, we need to be more than dust. It's necessary to live, to live, and to be more than dust. And he's saying beforehand, we can't use the things of God loans from the magnanimous father. Do you know which loans God has given you? Let it say pencil or pen, paper, and write down. Which loans? Family, friends, the body, time, vitality so many things. What are we doing with it? Exclusively using them for ourselves. That's what majority of people do. We use our time. We use our money, which is not ours. Temporarily comes through us. 
And we give excuses. We say, come on, I work so hard. I deserve, I deserve. This is called entitlement, right? When we feel like we deserve more than we actually deserve, we are butlers of life. Butlers. The other day, we talked about this. Get out of your house and think about never coming back. That's death. That day is going to happen whenever God knows. So it's very important for us to double check sooner than later. Right now, at this moment, we are living a very crucial time. Today, I was listening to a very impacting podcast from a spiritual scholar in Brazil, and she was saying, how many lives have we possibly lived on earth? It's probably, she assumes, we've been here for 5,000 years, 50 centuries, going through trials and expiations. Right now, this reincarnation is the last one. In that period, when evil shall be weaker in us than the good. For us spiritists, we must, must contemplate this true scenario every day. And he says, in this message, now the times are different and responsibilities are greater. Times are different, responsibilities are greater. Spiritism, tearing our near adult minds, wide horizons of a superior ideal impels us forward towards peaks of perfectibility. So we're here to refine ourselves. We're here to help those who are in need. He says it. The needy. Humanity calls us to work. What are the things we need to work within ourselves? But besides that, sharing the tools you have. That's why we have cardiac radio. To share the good. To share the tools of love right here, right now. Why? Because it's good for me. I cannot be selfish and keep it for myself alone. I can't, I can't. I need to share. I need to make time to share with others. And he talks about the loving creator that created us, the living monument of God. So you are God's monument. Who would know? You and I. God's sculptures. Let us honor our divine origin, creating the good as rain of blessings or showers of blessings along our own footprints. Oh, my Lord. So today we're going to look at ourselves and feel ourselves as monuments of God, living monuments of God the divine construction in us. Do you ever feel yourself as divine? Yes, coming from God? No or yes? Do you feel yourself? Today we're being asked by Dr. by Professor Dr. Eudipus Barsanuf to feel ourselves 
as creatures by this loving creator, feeling ourselves as living monuments of God. Let us honor our divine origin and create a shower of blessings as we live. How do we do it? It's a smile, kindness, caring, compassion, charity. There's so much. But he says, right now, we cannot allow the enslaving routine to stop us. We need to overcome it, be victorious in the face of this enslaving routine. How many people do we know that say, oh, I'm so busy, I'm working too hard, I don't have time for this, but the day, and then they start promising, the day I get married, the day I have friends, family, a family, the day I buy the house, the day I am promoted, the day, and the day never comes. We need to prioritize using our free time to helping others every day, all the time. All the time. How do we honor our divine origin? By doing the good, co-creating the good. So the other day, People were talking, and I saw this older woman who was a spiritist. When she saw that people were talking ill about others, she very kindly said, I'm sorry, excuse me, I, I have to do something. I'll be in touch with you guys, and she left. This is how we do the good. We do not engage in bad conversations. We engage into inspiring people, motivating people, in being friendly to people, being kind to people, boosting in us the best. Because the best is the divine, it's not me, God. That's why you don't need to worry. Some people are worried about, I don't want to be vain. I'm worried about vanity. Why do you worry? If God made you to shine, shine, because God wants you to shine. That's how it is. You don't hide your talents being afraid of anything. You do it because it comes from God. So then you don't need to be worried about it. Wow. So every day is a new life. And that is the only one that takes away our illusions. We need to live and serve and be more than dust. What is the legacy that we are leaving behind us? What is the legacy? Let us then write down as homework, two homeworks, two steps, two fold. First, what is my legacy in this life? And two, let us repeat throughout the day, I am a living monument of God. I am a living monument of God. I am a living monument of God. Let us repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. I am a living monument of God. And feel as he says that we are co-creating the good as shower of blessings along our footprints. Mm -hmm. Visualize yourself balanced. I am a living monument of God. Visualize ourselves in action, helping others. And then let us visualize that this good is transformed into a beautiful shower of blessings. Euripides Barzanov. What a message. 
I am a monument of God, so are you. We are monuments of God, living monuments of God. Let us then realign ourselves and move forward, steady in the direction of a new life. Friends, we wish that this message inspire you as it is inspiring us and feel ourselves and repeat this affirmation. We are living monument of God. I am a living monument of God. You are a living monument of God. We are living monuments of God. God is so good. So good that he allows us to be reminded here. We need, it's a must, to seek the good, to live and serve, to be more than dust. Thank you, Professor Euripides Varsanov, for this message through Chico Xavier or Valdo Vieira and the opportunity of being here. Thank you. And so be it, right? We feel it, this vibration of the connection with Professor Euripides Varsanov. Let us feel it and boosting us living and serving. After all, we're monuments, living monuments of God. Another striking message. Let us take responsibility because nowadays we are greater than they were yesterday. Thank you, friends, for being here with us one more day at Kardec Radio. Always nourishing our souls with the spirit of truth. Thank you, friends.